Hi YouTube and welcome back. This is video 3 in the series of uh, NS Collection View for Mac apps. Now, uh, video 1 and 2 gave you a general introduction and number 2 got us as far as we are here with the uh, auxiliary views with uh, most of the interface set up and we have our nib file uh, down here and set up and stuff like that. We haven't added any code yet, but I have cheated a little uh, after making video number two. Over here in the uh, navigator, you can see that I do have my uh, data model class. That's here. Now, the data model class is a Swift singleton. Now, what I've done here, I haven't written it all out. What I've actually done is I've just copied the uh, the data model Swift uh, code from the source code. So I have added a new file. I've saved it as data model .swift, and uh, it imports Coco. It's uh, the class name is data model, and what this does it creates a uh, a singleton, a Swift singleton, using this code here by creating a, a static shared instance. So this code, when when any code at all accesses uh, an instance of this class data model, what it will actually turn is a, a previously constructed model, uh, a, a previously constructed instance of the class, I should say. Now, the book's uh, previous chapters, uh, going right back to chapter 15, I believe, talks and guides you through, talks about and guides you through creating um, a shared uh, data model for applications that can use data. Now, what this does is uh, it has some, uh, some private properties that are only available for the class. It has some uh, public properties, which will be the... Uh, the data source, it has some flag variables, it has a, a private init method <coughs> that protects the class um, from being created uh, externally in, in any other way than, um, than providing the shared instance. Uh, the book goes into the details about how this uh, class functions. It sets up a, a, a a path file for a, a data file XML, which will be the backing storage for the data. It has some uh, uh, public functions for adding new records, deleting rows, uh, updating rows, and saving any changes uh, made to the data model. Um, as I said, from chapter 15 and on, uh, the book uh, uses uh, data model objects quite a lot and so um, this is discussed in, in, in depth in the earlier chapters but the files in it's available in the source code now what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, add outlets for the various controllers and uh, we're going to start adding the protocols for the uh, for the main view controller and uh, getting some um, demo data in and start seeing these objects get created. So first of all, we're going to go over to the, uh, the nib file. We've got our two labels here that will show contact info uh, and the name in each uh, collection view item. So I'm just going to close the, uh, the utility panel over here and I'm going to go over and I'm going to open uh, assistant editor and assistant editor has correctly uh, found the uh, the correct class here that I want to uh, work with at the same time as having this open so here I've got the uh, the nib file and I've got the correct class over here and so we're going to use the assistant editor method of creating the outlets for this. So I'm making some space under here. And now I'm going to take the first label, select that with a single click, and then I'm going to right click if you've got right click set up or control click. 
and I'm going to drag a connection over here and this is going to create an outlet or a property uh, through which we can access this label. So right click, outlet, I use a, a three letter acronym for the type of object so although it says text field down there it is in fact a label so we say LBL name spell that correctly connect down here same again LBL contact info this will be the label that displays phone numbers or email addresses or whatever you want to put in the contact info connect and there we have our two properties set up that's that done we did everything else previously uh, concerned with the uh, item quick look at the book collection view protocols that's what we just did there for the collection view item chapter 17 section 5 collection view protocols this is over in the main view controller we need the collection view data source protocol and the collection view delegate we also need an outlet for the actual collection view so we're going to do all that now so over to the main storyboard there and we're going to go down here to the collection view in the main view controller Sometimes uh, Xcode will get this wrong and won't select the correct file. So you go up here to the uh, Assistant Editor Jump Bar, select Automatic, and select View Control Swift File there. Now, first of all, we want the protocols. Comma, jump down to the new line and say NS Collection View. data source delegate that's that one and then NS collection view and we want the collection view delegate there so now we have the two delegates we've got a warning here this is probably telling us that uh, Top view controller does not conform to protocol NS collection view, blah, blah, blah. That's because we haven't got the basic methods that uh, we are trying to adopt for the, uh, the collection view protocols. So we will have those in place in a minute. Now we need an outlet. Now we need to make sure that we're selecting the actual uh, collection view. So I'm going to open the uh, the outline here, and there is the collection view because it's an embedded control. It's inside a bordered scroll view, then a clip view, then we've got the actual collection view. So now we need an uh, an outlet for this. Right click and drag. Outlet. It's a collection view, and I'm going to call this call view. Connect. So there we have our outlet now and I'm going to put some space in view did load and then I'm going to take a quick look at the book see what else we need here in view did load uh, we're going to uh, assign self this class to the collection view data source and the collection view delegate just to let it know which class is going to handle the protocol methods. So now we have a call view. There. Data source equals self. Call view dot delegate equals self. There we go. quick look at the book register the nib and what does that mean well when we start this application we're running with storyboards but we are we also have a, a nib file which houses the uh, uh, the UI for the collection view 
and we need to uh, register this with the application so that uh, it can ask for it by name and the name is call view item so call view item is a collection view item and that's the name that uh, we're going to give uh, for the collection view item so it gets registered so all that goes on in uh, in uh, view did load so we're going to switch back here and we're going to first we're going to create a reference to a nib so we're going to say let nib equal ns nib nib name just get back to that nib name collection view item bundle nil Hold that. double quotes and then call view item nil for the bundle there. and then one more check on the call view item register nib so what we're doing now is we're going to register the collection view item that is now a nib with the actual collection view for identifier now this bit normally you would look for a string identifier like you would with uh, uh, for example a, a column view or a cell view item in a table view but what it's actually going to do here is it's going to use the first part of the name of the actual nib file. So call view item is the first part of the uh, the nib without the nib extension, and it's going to use that here as the identifier. So now we go down here and we say call view now nah. register nib. Uh, we're going to supply that with the nib instance we created and then the same identifier string call view item that's that done this is still complaining that we don't have the uh, the minimum uh, data source uh, uh, protocol methods for the collection view data source, but we'll get back to that in a minute. So just try to ignore that. Right. The collection view has some properties that we're going to also set up in view did load. And this refers to uh, how the items are selectable. Now we want to be able to select items, but I don't want to allow uh, empty item selection. And I don't want to allow uh, to allow multiple item selection. So we're going to add this code also to do to uh, view did load. So all of that is done on the call view item outlet. Allow empty selection false. You can also do this in uh, in the inspectors in uh, in the utility panel by selecting the object, but code makes it more clear. Cloud view and multiple selection false and collection view selectable equals true like that. All right now. Before I add these protocol methods, I'm going to jump back into the uh, storyboard file. Get rid of that. Keep keep the uh, keep the assistant editor open, and we're going to start creating the outlets and action methods for these uh, views. So once again, just help uh, Xcode find the correct class file associated with the uh, with the views. 
the view controllers I should say. Now if you don't know how these got associated then go back and see video 2 because we covered that there. But now we're going to add outlets for these two and actions for these two. So starting with this one, click, drag, one outlet, three level acronym for a uh, text field, so txt name, connect, this one, again outlet, txt contact info, like that, and now the action, and the add button, very important now change to action there this is a rookie mistake and I keep making it all the time I keep forgetting to uh, switch to action there and I end up creating an outlet that I don't need but now we've got an action we're going to call this button btn add new connect now we have an action method and cancel button btn Cancel and connect. Nah, action almost. Nah. There you go. So that's that done. Now, the cancel button will simply dismiss this controller. So we can add that code now. In fact, we can add the dismiss controller code uh, to both action methods. The button add new method will fire some code here that will add a new. Uh, a new contact to the contact database and update the display and then it will eventually reach the last line and dismiss the controller so we might as well just write that now dismiss dismiss controller and we just add self as the parameter there same for the for, for the cancel button this is the only thing the uh, the cancel button will do. Dismiss control itself. So that's that button done. Now we're going to go. Now we're going to go down here and select the update view controller. Here, again, we need that one. Update contact view controller. Same again. An outlet for the text field, which will be name, txt name, connect, and txt contact info for the contact info text field, and then an action for the update button, switch to action button, update, connect, again, this will eventually dismiss the controller, so we might as well write the code out now, self, action button for the cancel button, button, cancel, switch to action, click connect, Add the code self. <clears throat> That's those done. Now these these uh, view controllers will de will be displayed via segways from the buttons that appear in this section here. There will be some other buttons that do some background work like sorting and canceling selection. But the first two buttons that will add and uh, update will uh, fire segways that will open these panels. Before we can uh, go ahead and test any of this, we need to uh, confront those um, collection view delegate methods. Now, uh, section 17.9 says no legacy code. Now, what that means is that the uh, the the layout 
of the collection view uh, will probably be set up like this using a content array, uh, legacy source, uh, etc. And we want to make some changes to this and it's in attribute uh, inspector. We need to tell it that we're going to use the flow, uh, flow layout and we're going to set the size of those collection view items for the entire collection view. So we're going to go over here to uh, storyboard again and select the collection view uh, itself down there. Uh, go back to the regular editor and open the uh, utilities panel. Move that up there a little bit and uh, select the the uh, attributes inspector there. Now I'm going to cycle click until I've got hold of the actual collection view. Now, cycle clicking means that because this is a, uh, a composite control with a border, uh, border view control and a, and a, a clip view etc that when we click around we eventually reach the bottom of that hierarchy which is the, the actual collection view. So we've got the view up here, that's the whole view. We've got the border scroll view, the clip view, and then the collection view. So with attributes inspector open here, it says here, what type of uh, layout do you want? Well, we don't want the legacy version, which was um, the old collection view. We want flow. Now, when we select flow, we get these uh, uh, other features here that affect how the grid is going to look and you can do this in code but we're going to just adjust it here now our collection view items have got a match so we're going to say 150 for the item width and 100 for the item size now there's something that comes later in the book um, what will happen here is that when you get the collection view items appearing in the collection view there will be really close to the edge here in fact there will be no space so we, what we can what we can do is uh, select uh, is set some uh, some insets here I'm going to give this a 20 point inset there on the left side and uh, a 20 point inset at the top and that will, that will just give us some nice space around these collection view items okay that's that done and now we're going to go over to the view controller. Okay, now we're going to create the data source delegate methods. I've uh, added a little comment here so I know what I'm supposed to do. And uh, we take a quick look in the book under section 17.8, uh, data source delegate methods. The two required methods that will make that error go away and make this code hopefully compilable are collection view number of items in section and collection view item represent item for represented object at index path. Now the first method is asking for the number of items we're going to display, the number of collection view items in the collection view. For now we're going to just return 10, a hard-coded integer value. We'll change that later when we start talking to the data model. And the next one will uh, will ask for a collection view item. So here you can see the return type is a is an NS collection view item, and we have a subclass of that, of course, which is our collection view items uh, nib and Swift combination over here. So these are the two that we absolutely must uh, uh, prepare to get this to work, and. Uh, We'll do that now. So, first of all, start writing collection view and get that one. Number of items in section, and we'll just return 10. There we go. And the next one, collection view, item for represented object at index path. That one there. Now, the collection view uses the queuing and pooling system that is the same as uh, a table view controller in other words it recycles unused collection views as you scroll up and down items go out of view they get returned to the pool as you uh, scroll new items into view 
It's the collection view itself which returns these items to uh, uh, to the view again, and you get to repopulate them with code each time it calls. So when this one says to the collection view, you're going to display 10 items in a given section. We only have one section. This one is going to get called 10 times, and we're going to supply it with 10 items. All of this will work with dynamic data later, but for now, we're just going to use these hard-coded values. So we need to create an item to return in this method. So we say let item equal, and it's the collection view that will supply the item. Now here we have a parameter that's passed into the method from which we can uh, pull out a collection view item. So we say collection view like that dot make make item with identifier identify a string for an index path. So we do that, and the identifier string is the same string identifier we used to register the nib file, so it's call view item. Index path, that parameter is passed in for us the index path. And the index path, index path, contains information about the section and item number. So, we now have a live item called item. And an item, oh, I forgot one very important thing here. We are working with a subclass of uh, an NS collection view item, so we need to do a downcast here. So like that, and we're downcasting to our subclass of collection view item. So now, this item is aware of the properties. Uh, the label for the contact info, so we can now access that as a string value and put some fake data in to start with. Contact info stuff. And the name item, again, the label we created, name, string value, and some name, like that. And then finally, we return the item for displaying in the collection view, like that. At this point, those errors should disappear, gone. So, can we test? Well, let's see. I'm going to hit the run button up here now, but I will warn you that I have noticed some uh, slightly buggy behavior in recent versions of Xcode. I wrote the book earlier and, and got to this section using Xcode 7.2 or something like that. <clears throat> so we might get nil when this code attempts to access those labels. And there it is. Yeah, it's stopped on this line here, and down here you can see fatal error, unexpectedly found nil while unwrapping an optional value. Now I haven't covered this subject in the book, so it could be bothering some people, which is a great reason to have this video going. So we're going to stop this, and we're just going to take a look at why is that happening. Over to the navigator, I'm going to look at the uh, the nib file here. And here, when I select the, uh, the conduit object, we made connections uh, from this object to the labels here and here, from the, uh, from the object here. But when I select the object now, I can see that these connections, these outlets, that should be referencing these two labels are not actually connected. Uh, this is new behavior, that's why it's not in the book, but we can easily repair it here. So we're going to take this, and uh, just to uh, be clear on where we are, we've selected the nib, we selected the collection view item uh, proxy object, conduit object, and we are on the connections inspector. Now under that, you can see the available outlets that are in uh, a subclass of collection view item. 
uh, there was already a text field before we added the labels and there was already an image view. So if you think back to when we first looked at uh, uh, the image in the book of the uh, Finder application showing a, a collection view, we had an image and text for the icon and the name. And those are already in, but I chose to ignore those and add my own label. So we're going to connect this first label back to this label right here. So label contact info, oh sorry, that one's got to go to the bottom one there and that connection is back and then we're going to take the second one here and drag that to the top so name is going to be connected to that one and we now have these connections. Now we're going to try it again and see what happens. And there you have it. This is our collection view with 10 items. Uh, each one has got some hard coded data and we can't actually see the boundary around each collection view item. And we're gonna look at that in the next section when we, uh, when we add the uh, core animation layer data, which will set the rectangle around the edges and uh, put some color in the background and stuff like that. But here you can see our collection view data is uh, it's loading up now. It's hard-coded data. We're not connected to the model just yet. But things are working. So the nib file works. Uh, the collection view item class, the, the custom class is working. And we're getting those items that we're, that we're asking for. So I'll close that. Right. Now... To get the uh, to get the uh, the collection view items uh, looking like they did in the demo, uh, we're going to work with uh, uh, the core animation layer. So right here, before we return before we uh, return this live object here, we're going to dig down into the uh, the items view layer and. Uh, manipulate some properties of the core animation layer. So to do that, we're, first of all, we'll try the border. We're gonna set a border width. Now you do that by digging into the, uh, the item view layer property. Now I showed you uh, in an earlier video that you can ask for a layer by selecting view effect properties in the uh, utilities inspector of the actual nib and the view. Now, now that we've done that, we can say item view layer, which is a uh, core animation layer. And then you can do things like uh, border. Got a border color there. And we're going to start by saying border width equals four. Now, I'm going to go over and check my book and see what else we can do here. Item view layer, layer is an optional because it might, might not have one. Border width, we've already set that to four. Uh, we can set a corner radius to round off those uh, corners on the rectangle, and we can set some colors. Now you'll notice that the color here, we've got a border color, and that one is an NS color, dark gray color, dot. CG color. So this is a cast to CG color because the layer border color property is a CG color, but we're going to first get a color from the simple NS color class. And then we're going to do the same thing here for the background color for each view item before we return it. So back to the Swift file, we'll take border color next. And we say item dot view dot layer dot border color this is going to be the dark gray color so we say ns color dark gray color and then cast that to a cg color that's the dark gray color on the border and then we're going to do the item color background item dot view layer and 
background color. I'm going to do the light gray NS color dot light gray color again cast that to a CG color type and then finally we're going to do the corner radius layer dot corner radius and I believe that was set to 10 there we'll give it a run and a try and see what it looks like so getting better starting to shape up you can see I haven't done any uh, any uh, uh, layout there's no auto layout anchoring the collection view to the edges of this so we'll do that in a second We've got that 20 pixel border uh, to the left. Uh, it's doubling up, so it looks like I've chosen left and right where I could probably get away with uh, top and left. So we'll fix those things up now. We'll just close that, stop that. Um, the app doesn't actually shut down when I click on the red button, on the red window button. You'll see it just closes the window. We'll, we'll uh, look at that a little later. But now if I just take a look at the storyboard for a second here. We're going to select the collection view item. Oh, actually not the collection view item. We, we, we want the, uh, the border control there. And then I'm going to come down here and put on some basic uh, constraints. And we're just going to say add missing constraints for that one. So that's locked in place there. Uh, then we're going to go and select the collection view there. And uh, look at uh, attribute inspector. And we're going to look at these. Uh, we've got left and top and I want 20 on the right there like that and I'm just going to set that back to zero there these are the insets for each item so now we're just going to run this one more time see how that looks now that we have auto layout in place we should be able to resize and watch it reflow and that's working quite nice so those are those are our 10 items and uh, core animation layer is taking care of the background color we've got the border color here and the rounded corners so that's looking great next we need these buttons up here so we can start doing some uh, uh, segways and open those uh, extra view controllers okay we are now up to section 1711 where we're going to add the ui controls which means buttons five in all new edit delete sort and over to the right we've got cancel selection so let's jump in here here we've got our storyboard and our main view controller selected and we want regular push buttons so one there like that control copy control like that and then control v paste 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 five buttons in all this one cancel Selection and then this one new a new contact line this one up next to that edit this one is delete that and this one is sort 
So, like that. Quick check with the book. Oh, fix up some alignments here. Get them a little bit closer, these over there. There we go. And make sure that's nicely aligned. There. There we go. And we're just gonna select these controls and say uh, add missing constraints. There we go. Got some nice spacing constraints. And uh, yeah, let's just see how that looks. Just press stop and play. <clears throat> and there they are. Just try and resize it. Things are looking pretty good. There we go. Now, stop and stop. Now, new is going to open the the uh, add new contact view controller edit is going to uh, open this one where we open an existing uh, contact and edit the data and click update or cancel delete is simply going to delete one down here sort is going to toggle the sort order of the data in the view cancel selection is a button that will let us cancel any selection we've made so Delete and sort and cancel, they're going to need their own uh, uh, action methods to call code. These two are only going to open these with the help of a segue. So now I'm going to select the new button, right click, drag over to the view. And uh, from the uh, pop over here, I am going to select a sheet for that se uh, action segue. Same again with edit over to this one. Again, sheet. And we've got some new segways. I'm just going to close this for a second. And we are going to move this one down here. And move this one down here. So we can see how, how they look. So we've got a segue, segue. And then. We're going to open the identity inspector, uh, or sorry, the attribute inspector. We're going to give these segues a string identifier. So this one is going to be called show add new controller. And we're going to select this one. And this is show update controller now these segue names correspond to the classes behind these views so we have update contact view controller update contact controller sorry so this one is called show update controller and we have uh, add new contact controller and so the other one was called uh, show add new controller so we have a, a good idea of what's going to happen when we click on these now uh, in an earlier video we've already coded the dismiss view controller code for all of these buttons we just haven't added the functional code for the add and update parts but if we test this now we should find that we can display both of these controllers and dismiss them. Well, there's new, and it doesn't matter what we press, they will disappear. And there's edit with the update button, like that. And notice they are in a kind of model state, they're, they're not transient, so I can't just click behind and hope they'll go away, they won't. You have to click on a button to get rid of them. So that's those in place. And uh, I am going to stop this one right again here and get ready for the next part. That is actually now the end of this third video. Uh, 
because the next one is going to be a lot of code. So we've now got all the visuals done. We haven't connected these uh, remaining buttons up yet, but they're going to have a lot of code to deal with. Uh, the view controllers over here, the auxiliary view controllers for adding new records and updating records are all done. Uh, they're connected, the segways are there, we've named the segways. Uh, the app is uh, running partially with hard-coded data. And so the next video, uh, video four, will uh, start looking at uh, incorporating the data model class that we have here. Uh, that's already coded. We're not going to write all of this out but it is in the uh, source code download. So you can uh, take that and it is of course in the book and it explains what all of it does in the book. And uh, that's what we will be uh, incorporating into the, uh, the next uh, couple of videos. So we're gonna get a basic app running. Uh, we're gonna start adding data and updating data. And then we'll implement things like the sort function and uh, tracking selection and things like that. So I will say thank you now for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, I see you in uh, the next one in the series, which will be video four for NS collection views with Mac applications using Xcode 7 and Swift 2. So. See you in the next video.